In this tutorial, we're going to work on some quantitative problems associated with electroplating and electrolysis. Now, what mass of nickel metal can be plated onto the cathode from a nickel sulfate solution using a current of 8 amps for 15 minutes? So how can we find the answer? Well, first, let's write the half reaction that occurs at the cathode. So nickel is going to be reduced to nickel metal. So this tells us that one mole of nickel can be plated onto the cathode for every two moles of electrons that pass through the solution. Now keep in mind one mole of electrons that flows through the circuit is equal to 96,485 coulombs. And charge is equal to current multiplied by time. So the unit for electric charge is the coulomb, and the unit for current is amps, and the basic unit for time is seconds. So one coulomb represents a current of one amp that flows for one second. So how can we use this information to calculate the mass of nickel that can be plated onto the cathode? Well first, let's start with the time in minutes. And let's convert minutes into seconds. So there's 60 seconds in one minute. And then let's multiply the time by the current, which is 8 amps. So it's just going to be 8 amps over 1. So we can cancel the unit minutes. And so right now we have seconds times amps, which is equivalent to a coulomb. So in the next step, we could say that 1 amp times 1 second is equal to 1 coulomb based on this conversion factor. So now we could cancel the unit seconds and we could cancel the unit amps. So now we have the charge in coulombs. Now we can convert from coulombs to moles of electrons. 96,485 coulombs is equal to 1 mole of electrons. Now we know that two moles of electrons that passes through the wires represent one mole of nickel that's plated onto the cathode. So we can write two moles of nickel, I mean two moles of electrons per one mole of nickel. You can write nickel two plus or nickel, it won't change your answer. So these units will cancel and we can cancel moles of electrons. Now the last thing we need to do is multiply this fraction by the molar mass of nickel. And so using the periodic table, the molar mass of nickel is 58.69 grams per one mole of nickel. And so we could cancel these units. Now let's get the answer. So it's going to be 15 times 60 times 8 divided by 96,485 divided by 2 and then times 58.69. So this will give you 2.19 grams of nickel metal. So that's how you can calculate the mass of a metal plated onto a cathode if you're given the electric current and the time for which the electric current is active. So therefore B is the right answer in this problem. Number two, how much current is needed to plate five grams of copper metal on the cathode from a copper sulfate solution in two hours. So how can we find the answer for this problem? Well let's write the reduction reaction. So the copper 2 plus ion is going to pick up two electrons and be reduced to copper metal. And so we can see that one mole of copper is associated with two moles of electrons. Now, since we need to calculate the current, let's start with the mass of copper. So we have 5 grams of copper metal, and we need to convert it to moles. So the molar mass of copper is 63.55. So one mole of copper has a mass of 63.55 grams. And we know that there's 2 moles of electrons per 1 mole of copper. So we can cancel the unit grams and moles of copper at this point. 
So now that we have moles of electrons, keep in mind one mole of electrons is equal to 96,485 coulombs. So we can use that in the next fraction. Now one coulomb is equal to one amp times one second. So we could cancel these units and also the unit coulomb. Now to get the current in amps, we just need to divide by the number of seconds. So let's convert two hours into seconds. Now one hour is equal to 60 minutes. And there's 60 seconds in each minute. So two hours is going to be 2 times 60 times 60. And so two hours is equivalent to 7200 seconds. So we're going to divide by 7200 seconds. So the seconds will cancel and the only unit that we have is the unit for electric current which is in amps and so this will give us the answer so it's 5 divided by 63.55 times 2 times 96,485 and then take that result divided by 7200 so the answer is 2.1 amps so that's the electric current that we need uh, to apply for two hours if we want to plate 5 grams of copper metal on the cathode. So D is the right answer in this problem. Now let's work on the third problem. How long will it take to plate 10 grams of iron metal from an iron 2 sulfate solution using an electric current of 5 amps? So let's write a reaction. So the iron 2 plus ion will pick up two electrons to turn into iron metal at the cathode. And I believe the cell potential for this is like negative 0.44 volts. So we can see that one mole of Fe relates to two moles of electrons. So what should we do? If you're given the mass, it might be best to start with the grams. So I'm going to start with 10 grams of iron metal. Now let's convert it to moles. So the molar mass of iron metal is 55.85 grams per mole. So now we have moles of Fe. Now let's convert it to moles of electrons. So for every one mole of iron metal that is deposited on the cathode, two moles of electrons flow through the wires of the circuit. Now let's convert this to coulombs. Based on Faraday's constant, one mole of electrons is 96,485 coulombs. And one coulomb is one amp times one second. Now we could cancel moles of electrons. And also we could cancel the unit coulombs. So our goal is to get the time. And looking at the answer choices, we need it in hours. So we need to get rid of the unit amps. So what we need to do is divide by the current, which is five amps in this problem. So we no longer have this unit. So now let's convert seconds into hours. So we know that there's 60 seconds per minute and there's 60 minutes per hour. So now we could cancel the unit seconds and we could cancel the unit minutes. So now this will give us the time in hours. So it's 10 divided by 55.85 times 2 times 96,485 divided by 5 divided by 60 and then divided by 60 again. So this is equal to 1.9 hours. So that's how long it's going to take to plate 10 grams of iron metal using this current. It's like 1.9195 hours. It takes an electric current of 5.739 amps applied to a solution of MSO4 for one hour to plate 7 grams of an unknown metal. Identify the unknown metal. 
So I recommend that you pause the video and try the problem. So what do we need to do to identify the metal? Anytime you wish to identify a substance, the best way to do so is to calculate the molar mass of the substance and see which of the answers that it matches. Now to calculate the molar mass, we need to take the mass in grams and divide it by the number of moles. Now we already have the mass of the unknown metal, so that's half the battle. Somehow, we need to use the current and the time to calculate the moles of substance that we have. Now what charge does the metal have? Well, we know sulfate has a negative 2 charge, so therefore the metal has to have a plus 2 charge. So the reduction reaction for the metal is as follows. So we know that one mole of electrons, I mean two moles of electrons rather, corresponds to one mole of the metal. So let's start with the time in hours. So we have a time of one hour, and let's convert that to seconds. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes, and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. And then let's multiply the time in seconds by the current in amps. So this will help us to get the charge in coulombs. One amp times one second is equal to an electric charge of one coulomb. So the unit hours cancel. We can cancel minutes. We can cancel seconds. And we can cancel amps. So now we have the charge in coulombs. Now what's next? What do you think we should do at this point? Now we need to convert coulombs to moles of electrons. So we know that one mole of electrons is 96,485 coulombs. And then we know that two moles of electrons corresponds to one mole of the metal. And so we could do away with the unit coulombs and moles of electrons. So that's how we can calculate the moles of metal that's going to be plated onto the cathode. So it's going to be 60 times 60 times 5.739 divided by 96,485 and then divide that result by 2. So this is equal to 0 0.107065 moles of the metal. So now let's calculate the molar mass. So we have 7 grams of the metal divided by 0 0.107065 moles. And so the molar mass is approximately 65.4 grams per mole. So now all we need to do is match this molar mass with the substance. The molar mass of copper is 63.55. So that can't be it. The molar mass of nickel is 58.69. So that doesn't match it. The molar mass of iron metal is 55.85. But the molar mass of zinc is 65.38. So that matches it. And the molar mass of lead is 207.2. .2, so that's definitely out. So we can see that the unknown metal is zinc in this example. And zinc does have a 2 plus charge, or a plus 2 charge. So zinc fits the description. Number 5. During the electrolysis of an aqueous solution of 1 molar sodium hydroxide, hydrogen gas is produced at the cathode, and oxygen gas is produced at the anode. If a current of 5 amps is applied to this solution, for 45 minutes, what volume of oxygen gas will be produced at the anode at STP? So let's start with a picture. And so we need two electrodes, and these electrodes have to be inert electrodes. So we can use two carbon based graphite electrodes or platinum electrodes. And we're going to attach a battery to the cell. So we're going to fill this beaker with water, and we're going to have a 1 molar sodium hydroxide solution in water. Now this is the positive terminal of the battery, 
and on the left side we have the negative terminal. And so electrons are going to flow towards the positive terminal and they're going to emanate away from the negative terminal. Now knowing this, which electrode is the anode and which one is the cathode? You need to know that electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. So on the right side we have the anode, on the left side is the cathode. Now oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction occurs at the cathode. So we need to know what reactions are occurring at the anode and what reactions are occurring at the cathode. And so you need to look up the standard reduction potentials for water under basic conditions. Now, reduction will always have the electrons on the left side. Oxidation will always have the electrons on the right side of the half reaction. So at the anode, hydroxide will be oxidized into oxygen gas and water, and it's going to release four electrons per oxygen molecule. The cell potential for this is negative 0.4 volts. Now, at the cathode, we're going to have a different reaction. Water is going to acquire two electrons and it's going to turn into hydrogen gas plus hydroxide. So at the cathode, hydrogen gas will be produced. And at the anode, oxygen gas will be produced. Now our goal is to calculate the volume of oxygen gas that will be produced at STP. For gases, recall that one mole of a gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. So if we could calculate the moles of O2, then we could use that to calculate the volume of O2. And looking at our answers, it's all in milliliters, so we need to convert liters to milliliters. One liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. And in this half reaction, notice the ratio between O2 and the number of electrons. So the coefficient for O2 is 1, and for the number of electrons it's 4. So we could say that 1 mole of oxygen gas will be produced when 4 moles of electrons flow through the wires of the circuit. So using what you know, go ahead and calculate the volume of oxygen gas in milliliters that will be produced at the anode at STP, standard temperature and pressure. So let's start with the time in minutes. So the current is being applied for 45 minutes. And let's convert that to seconds. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. And then let's multiply that by the current, which is 5 amps. And then let's convert that to coulombs. One coulomb is one amp times one second. So we no longer have the unit minutes or seconds or amps. Now let's convert coulombs to moles of electrons. So there's 96,485 coulombs per one mole of electrons. Now we have the ratio between the moles of oxygen and the moles of electrons. For every four moles of electrons that passes through the battery or the wires of the circuit, we could say that one mole of oxygen gas will be generated at the anode. Now oxygen is a gas, so we could convert that to liters using this conversion factor. So one mole of oxygen is equivalent to 22.4 liters of oxygen. And finally, let's convert liters to milliliters. One liter is a thousand milliliters. And so that's all we need to do in this example. So now we have the final unit in milliliters. So it's going to be 45 times 60 times 5 
divided by 96,485, divided by 4, times 22.4, and then times 1,000. So the final answer is 783.54 milliliters of oxygen gas. So you could round that and say it's about 784 milliliters, which means E is the right answer for the problem.